have been asked by Marty over at Scraps and Sequence to participate in a CauseTuber Q&A tag. So I'm going to answer some questions today about me and I will hopefully get back to some regular videos very soon. All right, I guess let's get started. Our first question is what's your channel name and what's the story behind it? So my channel is called Casey Creates. The story behind it is absolutely just the fact that my name is Casey and I wanted something that I could use for all kinds of things. I do sew and I do a lot of historical costuming, but I also do some calligraphy. I also do some illumination. I do lots of different kinds of projects. And this was just a way of sharing my art, my work. So this has kind of become a little bit more costuming based than uh, originally intended, but I just haven't changed the name. It still feels like it fits pretty good. Second question is when and why did you start costuming? So I started costuming back in the early 2000s. I was a performer at the Bay Area Renaissance Festival in Florida, in Tampa Bay, and I was a member of the chess match. So I was doing some sword fighting and that sort of thing, but in order to perform at a Renaissance Festival, obviously you have to have some kind of costuming to wear. I did a lot of sword play and rolling around in the dirt. You know, that was that's kind of where I started and I kind of moved into some court gowns um, and that sort of thing. Third question is, what is your usual genre of costume? I am a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism. So a lot of the costuming that I make lives within the 13th to 15th centuries. I do have a soft spot in my heart for Tudor garb. I am a huge fan of Queen Anne Boleyn. She is one of my, probably one of my favorite characters in history. She's a very misunderstood character and I wish that we knew more about her. Unfortunately, because of the way that her life ended, we do not have a very accurate picture of who she was or what she was. She is one of my favorite people and I will talk about her until I'm blue in the face. So like I said, the Tudor era does have a very soft spot in my heart. I do love some early Elizabethan as well. Shakespearean, that's kind of my favorite. I am doing a lot more 14th century right now, mostly because it's more comfortable. So the next question is how many costumes have you made? I have, I honestly can't count the number of costumes that I have made. I have been costuming now since the early 2000s, so the better part of 20 years. I have been sewing for the last 30, well, I'm sorry, 27 years. I'm really not sure how many costumes I have made uh, between myself, my children, commissions that I have done for other people. Yeah, there's a lot, and I'm just really not sure what that number is. What was your first costume? Ooh, my first, my very, very first costume would have been my very first year of either a Renaissance or a pirate festival in Florida. If I can find some pictures, I will post them right here. Um, I'm not sure if I have pictures remaining of that. The next question is which costume is your favorite or biggest accomplishment. So I am actually wearing the dress that is my favorite or my biggest accomplishment. And the biggest part of that is because of this huge hand painted pomegranate here. So this dress I designed based on Morgan Donner's heraldic dress uh, video. So again, I'm a member of the SCA and I will post my heraldry right up here for you to see so you can see kind of the, the way that the two play off of each other. So I hand stamped this with a uh, Crucially style cross all over the pieces and then put it together. And then I hand painted the pomegranate here, which is almost an exact match of the pomegranate in my heraldry. So that is kind of my biggest accomplishment. Unfortunately, the paint is fading with each wash and that I'm not too happy about. The acrylic didn't do quite as well as I had hoped. So again, lesson learned, you know, that's if you're not learning something, then you're doing it wrong. I will be touching up the paint this year, hopefully, but this is my favorite, uh, my favorite piece. The next question is, which of your costumes do you like the least? That's a tough one. Really, the only reason that I have costumes that I'm not a big fan of is because they don't fit so well anymore. I don't really have any that I dislike. 
I try not to make things that I won't get use out of or find useful or wear. Where's your favorite local place to go shopping for fabric and other costuming materials? So I live in the state of Ohio and I live in a very small town east of Columbus. And unfortunately, my local fabric situation consists of Joann's and Hobby Lobby. I do hear tell that there is a fabric outlet in Berlin, Ohio called Zinks. I am planning an adventure there this summer. Hopefully once this stay at home thing is lifted, I would really like to get a chance to go out there and see what that's all about. We do have a local quilting store, but again, nothing that really suits the costuming need. I do also get a lot of fabric that's given to me. I have been very, very lucky in that regard that I have a stash of fabric that I could probably sew on for the next 10 years and not run out. It's really a problem. Moving on. What is your favorite online store for purchasing fabric and other costuming materials? So because I am part of the SCA and I do a lot of medieval costuming, but what I use a lot is linen or linen-like wool. So I do um, fabricsstore.com. I will link that below. They have wonderful linen. I do recommend that for anybody that I'm sewing co uh, commissions for. That's where I usually have them send me fabric from. They also have, this is not sponsored, but they do have a 7% off code I love linen. I'll put that on the screen. If you use the code I love linen at fabrics-store.com, you can save 7%, which is usually about the cost of shipping. So like I said, not a lot, but it is enough to help. They do have the best prices though. Their linen usually ranges between 10 and $12 a yard, which is agreeable, you know. Renaissance Fabrics has beautiful fabric Sartor. Oh man, if I could get my hands on anything from Sartor, I would just probably die. Because they have the most beautiful recreations of historic extant fabrics. Um, lush cloth of gold, beautiful pomegranates. If you ever want to send me anything, yards and yards of that would be amazing. Again, not, please don't send me that. But, you know, yes, please send me that. So let's move on. Commercial patterns, self drafted patterns, or winging it. So I have a huge collection of commercial patterns. Um, I started my kind of vlogging my sewing journey by doing a lot of vintage 40s and 50s inspired. And of course, as you probably are aware, if you're into vintage, simplicity and McCall's and Butterick all have had vintage lines that they have come out with over the past few years. So I have collected all of those. Joann's used to run sales where they would sell their, do their simplicities for a dollar a piece with a limit of 10. And I have, a, again, it's kind of like the fabric problem. I have a pattern problem as well. So commercial patterns, I am definitely a fan of. I love indie patterns, anything that I can do print at home. I'm currently working through some truly Victorian patterns, which are print at home. I'm a big fan of patterns. I do wing it and I do self draft things when it comes up but I like to have a pattern to start with, something to give me an idea of where I'm going. So I will oftentimes start with a commercial pattern and then draft it to fit my needs. If I'm working on something that I know is gonna require a, a specific type of neckline or a specific type of bodice shape, I will start with a pattern, with a commercial pattern, and then I will work that into what I want it to be. So it's just a good place to start. What is my favorite or most used pattern? Ooh, so I have a self-drafted kirtle pattern actually that I use. The last kirtle video that I did, I did a pattern from the medieval tailor's assistant right here behind me. That was a four panel kirtle, which is different than what I normally do, but I do have a self-drafted coat hardy or kirtle pattern that I use that is probably my most used pattern because I do have several of those that I have made over the past couple of years. So moving on, hand sewing, machine sewing, or both. I am a firm believer that a sewing machine is simply a tool. And I think that if a medieval tailor had had a sewing machine, they probably would have used one. I do sew by machine, especially a lot of my long seams, that sort of thing. But I do a lot of my finishing work by hand. So I guess it's really both for me. I don't love hand sewing. I'm sure that a lot of you probably feel that way. Hand sewing is not my favorite thing to do, mostly because I just don't often get to sit still long enough to do a lot of hand sewing. Historical accuracy, 
historically inspired or neither. So costuming drama, my friend Noel, she has a statement where she says historically adequate. And I would say that I definitely fall into that category. I am a lover of all things romantic and fantastical. So I have a soft spot in my heart for the fantasy of the Middle Ages. Now, obviously, the medieval fantasy costumes that you see aren't historically accurate, but there is something to be said for a medieval maiden with long flowing hair, although she probably would have been wearing a wimple. You know, those kinds of things that I, that just really speak to me. I love the Victorian romantic, the romantic Victorian ideal of the medieval period. So I would say, um, while I am all for historical accuracy, it has its place. Historically adequate is probably much more my speed, but I do love a good fantasy uh, costume. Do I use thrifted or vintage fabrics? Yes. Yes, I do. So I have a huge stash of vintage fabrics. A lot of the most recent fabrics that were given to me when I got them in Chicago are actually vintage and you could call them thrifted, I guess, because they were someone else's stash that got hauled away. I am not shy of thrifted or vintage fabrics. I have no problem going to a thrift store. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite pieces of fabric that I have right now are, are curtain panels that have a fantastic pattern. And I'm looking forward to making something Italian inspired out of them. I'm thinking Italian Renaissance, maybe a Junoria or something like that. I have no problems using those. What am I always on the lookout for when I go thrifting? Again, curtains, bed sheets. Sometimes you can find cotton sateen sheets and cotton sateen sews up wonderfully, especially for undergarments and things like that. What are my favorite fabrics to work with and why? I love fabric. I love the way fabric feels. I'm very, very tactile and I love to touch fabric. I love to work with velvets. I love to work with brocades. I love to work with things that feel very sumptuous in my hands. I do love the feel of raw silk. Have I revamped any old costumes? So I actually did sell off some of my old Renaissance festival gowns last year sometime and I didn't really revamp them. I did work out some of the places that had, you know, some of the holes and the tears and I did restore some of them before I sent them off to their new owners. But as far as revamping anything, I don't think so. I have taken one of my, my I think I took my first coat hardy that I attempted from the old Berta pattern. I didn't like the way that it fit. It actually fit terribly, but it was my very first piece and I actually reworked that into some tea tunics for my kids. How has costuming affected my everyday life? So I spent a little bit of time a few years ago where I was dressing vintage pretty much daily. I was wearing 40s and 50s inspired on the regular. I actually have a blog out there in the blogosphere about it. I will link that down below if there's any interest. I've noticed that it's getting a lot of um, new followers lately and I haven't posted anything in there in years. Regardless, Miss Casey Sews, if you go look that up, you might find the blog floating around. So I used to sew a lot of vintage and I used to wear a lot of vintage and I am not very comfortable where I'm at right now as far as my weight is concerned. I'm not really comfortable with my shape and that's making costuming very, very difficult for me and wearing things that are costume inspired or historically inspired on a regular basis. You know, real talk here, I don't feel very comfortable in a lot of my costumes because of that. I have yet to find an era or a time period that's very well suited to my shape at the moment. I know that that's holding me back a lot. What part of making a costume do I dread the most? <sighs> Sleeves are probably the part that I dread the most because for some reason I can never get them quite to fit right. And it's not the arm size that are the problem, it's the sleeves themselves. That's always the part that I dislike the most. What's my favorite part about making a costume? So my favorite part about making a costume is probably the end. It's the part where I get to put on what I have made with my hands and show it off. What is my favorite entertainment when I'm working on something? So I love podcasts. I am a murderino. I'm a huge fan of my favorite murder. 
I am also a huge fan of the British History Podcast. If you haven't checked that one out, definitely do. I also love to listen to true crime podcasts like Case File. So I really like that. I like to listen to books on uh, audiobooks. I have a library, a Libby account through my library. I'm currently listening to The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. How many hours per week do I work on making things? Not nearly enough. I spend a lot of time walking around my sewing room and organizing things. I wish that I could spend more time sewing. I probably could find plenty of time to spend sewing if I could, could get my act together. How long does it usually take me to complete a costume? So I work best under pressure, but I would say probably a month to, to two months to make an entire piece just working on it as I can. Where's my favorite place to take photos of my costumes? So I actually live right down the road from a pretty amazing historical cemetery. They have a beautiful mausoleum that looks like a medieval church. And while I haven't had the opportunity to go out there and take photos, I actually would love to do that sometime. So maybe one of these days I will take my camera down and try to get some shots of some of my gowns in front of that mausoleum. It's just beautiful. And then of course, we do have some pretty parks. Unfortunately though, I can't always find the time to go take photos. So I do take a lot of photos in my house. Summer or winter costumes. So uh, a lot of the sewing that I do is for Penzik. We do, my kids and I usually go to Penzik War every year, you know, so I do sew a lot for that and it is a summer event, so it is hot. So I do a lot of stuff that can be worn, you know, in the hot of the day, camp dresses and that sort of thing. But I do like to sew for events like Twelfth Night where you bring out your fancy finery. I did my angel wing dress. Um, I'll show a picture of it. I did sew that one for Twelfth Night this year. So, I don't know, summer and winter? What are my favorite colors to work with? Man, red and black. I am a black heath at heart. If you ever knew me from my Renaissance Festival days, that was the color scheme of the family that I played a member of. So red and black have a really soft spot in my heart and I tend to use a lot of red and black in my costuming. And it is probably, uh, I feel like it's more flattering on me in dark colors than light colors. So I do tend to, I tend towards the darker things. What am I currently working on? I am currently working on Truly Victorian 110, a late 1880s corset that I'm finishing up. It is currently on my table. I also have patterns cut out for the Victorian chemise and drawers, which I will be working on as well as soon as I can get around to that. I'm currently sewing up some masks for some friends. I'm trying not to get into all of that. I know there's a lot of people who are home sewing masks for sale and home sewing masks for donation. I'm just not. Mentally, I'm not there. And I have to tell myself that that's okay. What's my next project? Again, I'm working on Truly Victorian 110 and I have the chemise and drawers coming up. I also have some plans in the works for, and um, we've just started talking about an 1890s. I also want to work on some 18th century stuff. I have the American Duchess patterns and the American Duchess books, and I have some beautiful silk taffeta on a roll back here behind me that I would like to turn into some fabulous Rococo or Georgian style stuff. I have lots and lots of plans and lots and lots of projects, so it's really hard for me sometimes to decide what I'm going to do next. I should probably put a list together that I can work through. <laughs> Noel, I need your help on that. <laughs> help me, help me plan, please. Oh, what's my ultimate dream costume? So, uh, uh, late 1880s bustle dress. I have always, always, always wanted one. I've always wanted an excuse to wear a bustle. Not that I have any problem with the junk in my trunk, but I, yeah, I need, I need, an, I need a reason to have an 1880s bustle gown. Uh, I would also love to have a Queen Elizabeth rainbow dress from the rainbow portrait. <sighs> I also love a little bit of gender bending costuming and I love to, um, if you've ever seen the movie Dangerous Beauty about Veronica Franco and the Venetian 
courtesans. I do love some of her costumes in that film that I would love to recreate. Do I have any other hobbies? I love to read. I love to play video games. I play Minecraft. I play The Sims way more than I should. I love, I like to do a calligraphy and illumination. I think I mentioned that before. I have done lots and lots of scrolls for my local SEA area. I do doll clothes, 18 inch doll clothes for my daughter's stalls. I like to make resin jewelry. I have lots and lots of hobbies. <laughs> Probably far too many, which is why my craft room is so big. Are they more significant than my costuming? No, probably not. Sewing is probably the number one, but everything else just kind of can build on to that. I find ways to work them into my costuming. What is my favorite thing about Costube? Guys, I love our community. So I'm speaking directly to my Costube friends and my Costubers here, but I love you guys. The fact that we get together once a week and have a chat that lasts for hours, it just makes my day. I started YouTubing because I was very, very inspired by people like Morgan Donner and Bernadette Banner, Kathy Hay. They are all costumers. I admire you guys and I look up to you and you are at the level that I want to be at. Your pieces, your, your knowledge, I want to soak all of those things in. I am the quintessential Hufflepuff and I want to be friends with everybody. And I have had this journey this year trying to figure out who I am in my world without being a mom or, or besides being a mom, besides, you know, all of the things that, that go into who I am. And I have had a hard time finding uh, circles that I fit in or that I feel comfortable in. And the Costume community has been that for me. So I thank you all for accepting me and letting me be a part of this. I and mean, I hope that we all get to continue doing this and knowing each other and getting to know each other. I feel like, you know, I, I feel like we're, we're, we're kindred spirits in a way. And, and I can certainly appreciate each and every one of you. The very last thing here is which three costumers will I tag? I'm supposed to tag someone I know personally. I'm supposed to tag someone from a different country and tag someone who's new to cause to. So I am going to tag Swimming in a Sea of Estrogen, Amy. I'm gonna tag you because I don't know you personally, but I feel like I've talked to you more than a lot of the other cause tubers. Tag someone in a different country. I'm gonna tag Anna Pretty Shepherd because I adore you and I love listening to you talk about your life on the farm. So I look forward to seeing what you could do with this and then tag someone who's new to Costube. I am gonna tag Carla, Tiny Angry Crafts. I know her from my vintage days. She's a very big part of the vintage community as well and I'm totally excited to see her make her way over to Costube. Carla, I am gonna reach out to you on that final tag. So if you guys feel like participating Go ahead and take these questions and make them your own. And that is it for me. Wow, that was a lot. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Give this video a like and a subscribe if you haven't. If you are working on something right now, tell me what you're working on. I'm looking for podcasts. So if you've got a cool podcast that you listen to, post it in the comments down below so that I can check it out. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.